What's going on guys? Welcome to video log number seven. This is a the one that comes after video log number six. So man, it's it's really it's been like seven months since I made that last video log. I've made a few videos in between, but I've been so busy with work, with a wedding, which because I'm I'm married now. I know I mentioned in the last video that I was engaged, and that was like seven months ago when I made that video. Uh so wedding, wife things, so all W's. So working on wiring, super busy with work, wedding, wife, you know, it's, so it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a lot of time that's passed since I made the last video, but I do have a lot of work to show for it. So in the progress bar, you'll see different sections of the video that you can jump to that should make that a, a lot easier. I'm going to be talking about sub harnesses again, but I'll be showing the body side of the sub harnesses and where they go into the interior. And I'll be talking about a great deal of the wiring and how I've set up the sensors and the grounds and I'm going to talk about the wiring and how I've separated the factory sensors and everything, how some of that stuff is still connected into the gauges and into the factory ECU. So I'll be talking about the wiring. I'll be talking about my brake delete in a little bit more detail with how I'm wanting to use the factory lines, most of the factory lines and the lines that I can go and quickly grab from Napa without buying a bunch of lines, but instead I bought some adapters to go onto my Chase Bays kit. So my exhaust, I'm going to talk about that and how my, how I'm going to have it welded and how I'm trying to have it welded without the, uh, the heat expansion and cooling off, cracking my wastegate in half. Cause I just don't want that to, I don't want that to be an issue a few years from now. I don't, I just don't want to have to buy another wastegate because my exhaust setup put stress on it and that cracked it in half. So, that my uh, my exhaust pipe though it bumps the HPS silicone kit that is supposed to be specifically for this engine in the IS300 chassis. I, I can't figure out how to how to connect the hoses. I think they might have sent me the wrong thing. And then my air intake going into the turbo, it looks like it's going to slightly bump the um, the the coolant neck that goes out into the radiator. So. Uh, that is going to be something I'll have to work around and I'll talk about what I have in mind with working around that. And also the turbo, the outlet from the turbo the into the intake, that is really close to the strut tower. So I'll have a little bit of difficulty with getting to that stuff. But anyway, so all of those things are in the, yeah, so you could jump around through different portions of this video really quickly. If you, if anything that I've been talking about right now, if it sounds cool and interesting, then Hey, subscribe like all that stuff because it's uh, i'm going to try to keep making videos for as long as i can really for as long as i have time to even when i don't have time to i'm still going to try to make videos all right so over here at the exhaust side so really quickly this isn't the final condition of how this is uh, this is going to look so this is my this is my is 200 slash alteza style fuse box i'm going to lob this off and this is going to be mounted back here abs block is going to be out of the way wastegate's going to be here level with as, as high as I can get it so that it's it's not the highest uh, point because it's a it's a water cooled that's the coolant in, entry um, for the wastegate wastegate is going to be mounted level with that upper coolant neck so that I don't if I do have to mount it higher then I'm going to put a little bleed screw on it so that after I bleed the coolant in the system I can just open up the bleed screw and just have it where the, the air that's floated up there will escape but I don't want to do that I'd rather have it level with with the cooling system as far as exhaust pipe routing, I'm going to have a bunch of V-bands on a, a, like at least four 45 degrees. I have, I think I'm going to have to use 190 with the flex pipe um, either on it or the flex pipe moved down to the bottom. But my idea is to have like on each section of the exhaust, like the, each little 45 degree bend or each little 90 degree bend, I'm going to have a, a V-band clamp welded to each one of those. So as the exhaust heats up and cools down, the, any stress that's put on the wastegate, it's not going to crack the casting in half in three, four years. It would hopefully just last and, and not crack in half. Uh, the same thing, I'm going to have 45 degree bends coming off of that because that's not going to be, the wastegate's not going to be mounted down there. It's going to be mounted a little more up here. Again, not higher than the coolant neck. This is my dual MAC valve. So it's, it, it's basically, if you don't know much about the dual MAC valve setup, Look it up. I, I kind of like it because you can you have the option of running constant pressure or variable pressure. It replaces the need for a four port. And it's better than just having one three port Mac valve. I like this. I prefer this this setup. All it is is one extra wire and one extra Mac valve, and then you just have a little T and the uh, 
the, the Haltech can do a little bit more precision controlling. And if I ever want to run a little compressed air tank, I could switch some, switch some settings around and uh, run a little compressed air tank to add pressure to the top of the spring. But um, yeah, so this is on its own little sub harness so that I can disconnect it. Uh, doesn't, this doesn't need to be, but everything else is on its own little sub harness. I'll talk about the sub harnesses later, but all that stuff is going to go here. This ABS block is going to be gone. The, all the brake lines are going to be gone. I'll talk about those a little bit later in this video, but I'm going to pull all the brake lines out whenever I take the engine out and then just dress that stuff up. And one of the little issues that I'm going to have to work around is so looking at it, look, well, you have to look kind of through my, my plastic that I have keeping this clean, but this is the outlet of the turbo and I've clocked it around to where it's to where it's here. I don't want to feed it up and then have it, but I, I could do that. So I could clock the turbo around to where it's coming up here and then the, it would take like a 90 degree bend or I could have it clocked down and that's about as far as I can go because it starts to get really close to the exhaust runner if I move it down anymore. But uh, I can take a 45 degree bend here or a long mandrel bend. I don't know. Uh, there's, it's really limited in terms of space and what I can do. And this turbo is sitting slightly higher than what it's supposed to be uh, because I have it on a spacer on top of this, this exhaust manifold. This is a T4 exhaust manifold. So I bought a T4 to V band flange that mounts up to the, uh, to the turbo. But, the front, the inlet, is directly in line with these, so these little plugs. I only need one of them, as I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned, my wastegate is a coolant, uh, cooled wastegate that I want to mount on the same level as this. If I plug the top one and I run the 90 off of the bottom one, I'll have more space because I'll be able to, to bend this around and I should be able to put a 45 or maybe even a 90 on the front of the turbo the quarter inch NPT 90 degree that I would put here, it would give me a little more space as far as this goes and definitely plugging one, if not plugging both of them and then pulling coolant from another location, which I could do that. But as far as tapping this, I would use the 1 8 NPT as I mentioned, and the hole that you need to drill into a 1 8 NPT in order to tap it is a 7 16th or a 0.4 thousandths of an inch hole. The outside diameter of this is 0 0.40 thousandths of an inch. So I'll have to open that hole up 300th of an inch. So just run the 7 16th drill bit through it. Uh, so I'll unbolt this. It's not even secured very well. So I'll unbolt this, run that drill bit through, and then tap it, clean the metal shavings out, and then it should be good. And hopefully, whenever I run the, um, the inlet to the turbo, it won't bump this. But yeah, one of the problems that I have is, so this is the kit, the HPS silicone kit that I, I got from, I don't know, Vivid Racing. I think they, I think they sold it to me. I, I kind of feel like it's the wrong one. This is, this is for the GTE engines. This is the, uh, the 90 degree hose that goes, at least it looks like it is. It goes on the, um, going into the, the factory oil cooler that's on that side of the block. So, uh, this is the one that I can't figure out how to mount unless I've mounted this other one because there's no way that this one is going to go on this this lower um, this lower pipe this doesn't go on the firewall side so that means this has to go on the firewall side and I don't know how this goes on because that this is supposed to connect to the back side of the head so how is it supposed to go I don't know. I don't really know how this thing's supposed to connect. If someone knows, leave a, leave a little comment down below. As this one, it looks like it lines up with what it's supposed to. So this is, yeah, it's got to be bent a little bit, but it'll work, right? But this one, I don't know. I'm probably going to have to cut it up and buy some little 90 degree or 45 degree um, couplers. There's not a transmission that's, that's on the engine right now. It's just, it's sitting. I have a, um, a little... Uh, cheap scissor jack that's under the under the front of the engine just so that it keeps it level and it keeps it from tilting forward but that's it's not really sitting the angle that it's supposed to be sitting right now so I can't have my exhaust welded like this but my friend can't really weld it like this anyway I'm going to wait till my transmission is on the engine and it's 
and it's back in the car before I, I have my exhaust welded so that way everything lines up like it's supposed to. But as far as the throttle body setup, let's go talk about that because that's some really interesting stuff. This is a Porsche 997 GT3 throttle body. It's an 82 millimeter throttle body and I think it's got a 70 something, 77 millimeter throttle plate. I forget what it is. I actually said that in the last video. I don't remember, I don't remember what the number is. It's one of the largest production drive-by-wire throttle bodies that I could find. So that's what, I, that's what I'm using. And in order to get this to fit the Grady intake manifold, so this, this takes a Q45 um, inlet and this outside of garage, they make, a, um, they make an adapter plate for bolting in the 997 GT3 or just the Bosch style throttle bodies. Because I think most of the Bosch style throttle bodies that are around this same year they have that same flange style. So outside of garage, it's really good. It's, it's more than I wanted to spend on it, but it, uh, it looks really nice. And it just fits in there really well. So it just looks really cool. But check it out, outside of garage. They actually make them where they have different adapters for different throttle bodies and different intake manifolds. So you can click and select which one you have and which one you want. And on the front of the throttle body, I'm still waiting for it to come, but there's a company, they, they're selling stuff on eBay. They're called Raceworks, but it's a, uh, the, on the front of the throttle body, they sell this little aluminum piece that I think the one I ordered is black, but basically it, it bolts into the front of the throttle body. It has longer bolts that replace these going into my little adapter here. It's for that, that three and a half inch inlet. Uh, and that three and a half inch inlet is what I'm going to have my blow off valve, my intake air temperature sensor, I'll have that stuff welded to that three and a half inch inlet. And then this 45 degree, this is just a stainless one. This is from my exhaust. This is because it's, it's, I'm going to have aluminum right here, but I'll have a, uh, a three and a half inch to a three inch reducer going down from here to here. My blow off valve is going to be mounted to the reducer. Right now, the only one I could find is a cast one, but my blow off valve and my intake air temperature sensor are both going to be mounted to that. And I have the wires for those for that down there. And the blow-off valve doesn't have any wires. It just takes a vacuum. So that's going to be going down there. I still have to cut a hole in that little thin metal piece that's behind the headlight. But this 45 degree bend is going to clear the headlight. And this 45 degree bend is really awesome because it clears my power steering reservoir. It goes around my little chase bays. Um, that's my windshield washer sprayer. So on to sub harnesses and, and uh, talking about the sub harnesses. All of my sub harnesses are made for, for the engine. Everything is all wired up. I just have to, I have to put the wires in like the wire sheath and keep, make sure they're away from engine heat and away from anything sharp. So just a, a really quick run through of my sub harnesses that I made. So talking about those, so I have a sub harness that is entirely for the factory IS300 ECU. It disconnects down. I don't need this 45 there anymore. That was just to show. This little sub harness disconnect, it's got to be mounted somewhere. It's not right. It's not mounted, but this sub harness is only for IS 300 ground. So the IS 300 has two ground wires. One I have going into this and the other one I have grounding to, I think it's that ground. I think it's that strut tower ground, but there's two. I wanted one on the engine and one on this. And then I have a ground that's going between this ground point and the engine ground point. So I make a nice little triangle. Did the same thing with the Haltech grounding. So there's two ground wires for the Haltech. One goes on the engine. One is bolted back there on the, the factory ground point that goes onto the, uh, the inside of the chassis and the inside of the engine bay. And then I have a wire connecting that and that. And I think I even have a ground wire connecting that, uh, the Haltech ground with the IS300 ground. The IS300 sensor ground is ground to the block per Toyota's wire diagram, their sensor ground joins in and grounds to the block on most Toyotas. I think all Toyotas that I've seen that I've messed with the wiring on, that it all, it all bolts into the block. That sensor ground isn't isolated from the chassis ground. It's joined to the chassis ground. So for that reason, I have my IS300 sensor ground going from here to the block. Uh, it's really only for a few sensors. It's not really for many. I, I my, um, this is from a RAV4. I have to get the connector for it, but basically my temperature sensor is still going to be active on the IS300 on the gauge cluster. And it's really just going to be its own little closed system. So this, this temperature sensor will only feed the, um, 
the IS300 gauge cluster. This coolant temperature sensor, kind of the, the sensor wire goes into the block there, um, and then it goes back to the IS300 computer. So the things going into this little sub harness disconnect, it's like it's six wires. So like I said, there's that IS300 ECU ground. There's the sensor ground, which is Toyota's brown wire. The chassis ground is white with the black stripe. Sensor ground is brown. That's the same across all Toyotas that I've seen. I think some have brown with a black stripe, but for the most part, it's brown. So my AC is going into this as well as the um, oil level, oil temperature, that is the little floaty temperature thing. That's the switch that's on the very, very bottom of the oil pan. So that's still there, that's still wired in, and that's going into this. It's only feeding into the gauges, gauge cluster. It's not going to anything else. That's its own closed system. And also I wanna mention that when I was doing the rewire and everything, one of the things that I left out was my ambient air temperature sensor, the sensor ground that's on that. So the brown wire that goes out of ambient air temperature sensor, my AC wasn't working because that ambient air temperature sensor wasn't working. So it was a little bit of a learning experience for me because in a Toyota, apparently you need that ambient air temperature sensor to be connected to the factory ECU in order for the AC to work and blow cold. If the sensor's dead, doesn't work. If your sensor ground isn't connected, doesn't work. So moving back to this subharness connector. So on this one, I have my VVTI positive and negative. So that's there on the Haltech. It's the, the VVTI wire. There's one that goes to the Haltech and the other one is just a straight positive wire. So uh, that's set up the way that Haltech wants it. And Toyota just basically has two wires that both go to the factory ECU. So I'm just using one of those wires. And the other one is the positive that's just on whenever the ignition is turned on. Also have my all six fuel injector wires, fuel injector positive, and um, the five volts, the sensor ground, and the signal wire that's coming from this. Uh, so I might move this, um, this fuel pressure, the fuel pressure sensor, I might move it back here where it's not mounted with all the vibration of the engine because that will kill the fuel pressure sensor. And if I, if I lose the fuel pressure sensor while I'm driving the car, then I'm gonna have the car set to uh, to die pretty much. So it'll just it'll shut itself off to you know just because there will be an abnormal um, signal coming from the fuel pressure sensor. Uh, but yeah, so I, I just need a little uh, little flex line going from there to I don't know somewhere somewhere over here somewhere on the strut tower. This is my transmission sub harness. So in this, I have my reverse lockout for the T56. Like I said, T56 isn't mounted on the engine right now. I've got to take it out, set all that up. That'll be in the next video. So reverse lockout, that's this orange wire. It's grounded, it's going to be grounded to the, uh, to the transmission itself. So I'll have a ground wire going into one side of the reverse lockout solenoid. And then this other wire is going to a relay that is uh, that's mounted in the interior with my fuse box. My speed sensor wires are going to be coming from the transmission, even though I'm not going to be using the speed sensor because the T56 has a two-wire speed sensor. IS300 has a three-wire speed sensor on the manual transmission. The automatic IS300s don't have the speed sensor on the transmission. They use the ABS wheel speed sensors fed into that little ABS computer. And then the ABS computer tells the IS300 computer how fast the car is going, or maybe it just feeds directly into the gauge. I don't remember. I, I'm not looking at the wire diagram right now. I'm just going off memory. But yeah, so um, I'm using the two wires. So these are going to be going to the T56 speed sensor and eventually probably going into a Dakota digital box and then fed into my IS300 gauge cluster. Um, if you're wondering, well, well, why aren't you setting it up like the automatics and using your wheel speed sensors to feed into the, uh, the IS300 gauge cluster because it's set up and it can work like that? Well, I'm not doing it that way because I'm actually using all four wheel speed sensors feeding into the Haltech. There's really, technically, there's only one wheel speed sensor that's not connected to the Haltech. Initially, I had it connected, but I disconnected it because I needed one more input. So I... I don't have any wheel speed sensors going into the factory ABS computer, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to feed the cluster unless at least the front two ABS 
sensors are working. I don't know if, if it's only getting one, one ABS sensor signal, if it's going to be able to tell the gauge cluster what speed. Anyway, that's a, I'm, I'm digressing. Also my reverse wires are going into this. So this is for the cam position sensor. This is a little quick disconnect for the cam position sensor. It has its own, it's shielded, it has its own. Um, it's, I'm running a Hall Effect cam position sensor and a Hall Effect crank position sensor. It's an it's a Aerosport engineering kit. Um, I think Powerhouse Racing sells a kit also, but Aerosport engineering one is cheaper. And basically it's a Hall Effect sensor. Then the ones that they use are Little Fuse brand sensors. It's basically a Hall Effect sensor and a, and a bracket. The replacement Hall Effect sensors are like 20 bucks but it's mainly the brackets that you're paying for and the machining that goes into that. This is my ignition quick disconnect, which I'm really excited about because um, if you can hear it in the monotone nature of my voice, there's just excitement exuding from all of the monotoneness. Whenever I'm updating the Haltech map, there's sometimes when I'll have to disconnect my ignition depending on what I'm doing. And that's my quick disconnect for that. So I, you don't like mess with the, uh, burn out the ignition coils. So that's, yeah, so that's, uh, that's that. And then over on that side, I think I just have one disconnect that's over there behind the headlight. So then that disconnect goes to the radiator temperature sensor, the, um, the upper water neck coolant temperature sensor, my coolant pressure sensor. So all of that stuff that's there, as well as the alternator, um, the alternator signal wire. And then my crank position sensor has its own signal wire that's going down because it needs a shielded wire. So it has, it has its own signal wire that, that's going down for, the, uh, for that, for the crank position sensor. The one thing I do need to talk about is like that little section of wires that's right there, that, that's, all going to, that's all stuff that was coming from the ABS block that it's not going to be used anymore. So whenever I have the engine out, I'm just gonna cut into whatever is left of the factory harness that I haven't cut into yet and then pull that out. That'll free up some fuse locations. Uh, Cause I, yeah, I, I ended up adding to that fuse box, which I'm gonna probably have my own, like a, a separate video talking about that, but I've added little fuse spots in that fuse box, which is part of the reason why I took it apart. And then I realized that the IS-200 one slash Alteza fuse box, it's basically, it, you just, those little sections for the, for the fuse box, they just snap out of the old fuse, fuse box and they snap into this fuse box. So it makes it really easy just to, to switch between the two. They just pop in. And the fuse layout is mostly the same except for that little tan color block. Everything is a mirror opposite in that. So I'm probably gonna flip all the wires over in that so that it matches the new little cover um, for, that, for that black fuse box. Uh, but yeah, though, all those ABS wires are going to come out and that's going to free up a fuse spot or maybe two fuse spots or two relay spots or whatever that are, that's in that little, uh, that little fuse box over there. I did add for the Haltech, I added a 40 amp fuse, which is the one that's right there beside all the little pink fuses. I can't point to it, but so that one I added, that's the fuse that's specifically for the Haltech and all of the stuff that I added. So that I had to open the fuse box up to add a wire to that. And I added wires for a couple more fuse spots that uh, I haven't used yet, but you never know. I might want to tap into one of those fuse spots in the future and I just made it easier for myself to do that. So, so the emissions, uh, like all the emissions stuff with the with the IS-300, I'm still trying to control. I still want to keep this street legal where all the, all the emission stuff that Toyota put into it is still there. Uh, one of the things that I'm having issues with is this is my EVAP. Uh, so this is the EVAP um, solenoid, the vacuum switching valve or VSV uh, for the EVAP system. So the factory ECU tells that to come on if the, uh, um, if the pressure inside the gas tank is too high and then it feeds it into the intake. It just opens a little solenoid, it feeds the, the vapors into the intake manifold, and then it closes the solenoid. But I don't know if it's going to do that if it doesn't sense the engine running. So right now this is set to be controlled by the IS-300 ECU, but I don't know if the IS-300 ECU will even control it if the engine is not running, because it's not going to see the engine running. The IS-300 ECU is just gonna think the engine is in the off state because the Haltech is going to be controlling everything. So I also have a separate wire that's run 
somewhere. It's one of these other wires. I don't see, it might be this one. I think it is this one. But this other wire is the one that's, uh, this is feeding straight into my Haltech. And I have that input set up as a, uh, an EVAP input. So I can, or output, sorry, an output that would control the vacuum switching valve. Hopefully the IS300 DCU opens this vacuum switching valve, even if it doesn't see the engine running. So as far as all of my sensors that are on the IS300 right now, I have, so there's the fuel pressure sensor. That's, you know, I think that's a Haltech brand fuel pressure sensor. I also have oil pressure that's going to be mounted whenever I do mount, which I have to do that before I pull the engine back out because I have to make the, um, the, the braided lines for it. But my oil filter relocation where, the, where that's going to be mounted on the, uh, on the back side of that, I have the oil feed that's going to be coming out and cooling the turbo. And then also I have the oil pressure sensor that is going to be there. So oil pressure sensor, fuel pressure sensor, power steering pressure sensor that is going into the Haltech, but that's really only to raise idle with the drive-by wire. Um, so yeah, whenever I turn the wheel, it'll raise idle. What I thought about doing is replacing this power steering pressure sensor with a power steering pressure switch. Um, like one of the little, one of the old style vacuum ones that were on like the early nineties, eighties Toyotas. And basically it just screws in. And whenever you turn your wheel, uh, it raises the idle because it opens up the little vacuum valve. But I don't know if that's going to leak boost internally because this is going to be under pressure. So I'm keeping the factory IS300 power steering pressure sensor. And right now, I think I still need to figure out where this wire goes. And this one is an extra one. Yeah, spare one. So this, I don't know. This is a five volt sensor wire that goes to something. That's why I wrote unknown five volts. Um, I think it might go to my vapor pressure sensor because the vapor pressure sensor isn't on the engine. I think it's on the, uh, the charcoal canister. So I need to figure out how to test that without dropping the gas tank. That's going to be fun. I have two separate temperature sensors on the cooling system going into the Haltech. So I have one temperature sensor that's on the radiator and another temperature sensor that's on that coolant neck on the bottom. Also have a coolant pressure sensor that's on that coolant neck. So coolant temperature, coolant pressure on the coolant neck and then coolant temperature sensor that's on the radiator on the cold side of the radiator. So it will see the, the fluctuation of the, it's like, okay, the coolant's heating up, the coolant's cooling down. It's heating up, it's cooling down. And I can trigger alerts in the Haltech whenever that's not operating like it's supposed to. So I'm gonna set that up. That will let me know if my thermostat's ever locked or if something is going on with the coolant and I'm, it's, it's, the engine's not cooling as effectively, as effectively as it would. I'll be able to see that. Also, my coolant pressure sensor will show me if I ever have any, anything weird going on with uh, exhaust gases getting inside the, uh, the coolant. So anything with a head gasket, ECU should let me know. I don't know what, I, what the Haltech's warnings are, what they have in place whenever something like that happens, but hopefully it can detect if there's uh, anything going on with the, with the head gasket. I don't think I left anything out when I just mentioned that stuff, but I could have um, air temperature sensor. I think I mentioned that one earlier though, but that's, uh, that's that as far as engine sensors. I also have the wheel speed sensors coming from all four wheels. One of those I had to sacrifice for another input because I wanted to run a rotary switch, rotary dial to adjust. I think it's like zero through 12 and then you can adjust. So I'm going to have it tied into boost so that I can adjust boost level. That's gonna be fun. So that's it for now regarding wiring and regarding this on the engine. Uh, whenever I have the engine out and it's on the stand, that's going to be probably video log nine because the next one, video log eight, I'll be talking a lot about the interior, the cruise control, the uh, my fuel pump setup with my cool little green screws that I have that I got that are actually Yamaha R6 dress up bolts. And I'll also be talking about the Infiniti G35 pedal that I will have going into the car. That's a direct bolt in. I'm actually going to start recording that video directly after this one. So both of these will be posted close to the same time because I, I wanted to talk about engine stuff and then I wanted to talk about interior stuff and have it be two separate video logs. But my video log coming up, video log nine, will be a lot about the 
transmission, having to get all of that set up and bolt into the 2JZ because it's a T56 made for a Chevy. So I needed a bell housing. I've got to get a special clutch kit. I needed a different pilot bearing. Um, so all of that stuff, just it's, it's its own, that's going to be its own video with the engine probably on the stand and talking about the sub harnesses and, and whatnot. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you check out the next video on all the interior stuff that I have that's, that's interesting, depending on whether or not you think it's interesting. So anyway, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and as always, God bless you guys.